Hello everyone and welcome. I am sitting inside of the 2019 Subaru Forester. This is the sport model. Uh, and so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what is xDrive. So uh, specifically, what does xDrive do? And there's five major things. And then what changes have they made to xDrive for 2019? Because there are a few differentiations here. And so really, I think the thing to think about when you're buying a Subaru, you're not buying it because you want to go off-roading. You're buying it because off-road is going to take you to the places that you're trying to go. So it's kind of an adventure car. It's not something that you're thinking, I'm going to buy this extreme off-road rig. Instead, you're buying something that allows you to get places that you want to go, but that require, you know, maybe more ground clearance or all-wheel drive to get there. So I want you to keep that in mind. You know, it's not this rock crawling machine that locks up all the differentials. Instead, it's just using some clever tricks, some clever engineering engineering tricks in order to get you to the places that you want to go. And so they have this mode when you're at low speeds called xDrive, which you can put the car in. Uh, and so there's only one transmission offered for the 2019, which is the CVT for the Forester. They dropped the manual. And so all of the models will come with this uh, X mode above the base trim. And so what does this X mode do? Well, I think the easiest way to think about it is starting at the engine and then working your way out to the wheels. So starting at the engine, what it does is it changes the throttle mapping. So instead of it looking like a nice, you know, flat curve, like that it actually puts a kink in it and so initially you have a very you know gradual throttle input and that allows you to be pretty precise with how much throttle you want to give it but then if you need power that kink allows you to then once you get up into those higher you know you want some power you want the wheels to spin things like that you need the power to get up whatever you're doing then it gets you in there very quickly if you ask for it so it changes the way the pedal works versus normal driving to allow you to have a bit more sensitive of a throttle pedal now, the second thing, moving from the engine, we get to the transmission. And as mentioned, this is a CVT. And so what it does when you put it in X mode is it keeps you in a low gear range of that CVT. So the reason why it does that is that gives you more wheel torque. So you have increased throttle sensitivity. And then because you're keeping that uh, CVT in that low gear range, so a high gear ratio, then you have a lot of torque that you can put down if you need to. Uh, and you have that precise control with the throttle pedal. So we've got the engine we've got the transmission from there we move to the center coupling so you're going to be distributing the power between the front and the rear axles and so when you put it in X mode the third thing that this does is it's changing that coupling force of that center differential that center clutch pack so that you have an increased amount of torque transfer to the front or rear as needed so traditionally it's going to have a set bias between the front and the rear and it's going to be maximizing efficiency and then when you get into this off-road mode it's going to lock up that clutch pack a bit more so that whenever it starts to have slip on one of the front or the rear axles keep in mind this is open differentials front and rear so whenever it has slip on one of those axles it wants to make sure that you can quickly send that back to you know the axle that has traction Okay, so now we know what the engine does with the changing of the throttle mapping. We know what the transmission does with keeping you in the low gear range. We have that center clutch pack, which is going to lock up a bit more to allow for torque transfer to the axle that needs the torque. And then we get to the wheels. And so at the wheels, now we have our brake system, which is going to be intervening. And so what the brake system does is when it starts to see slip on one wheel, meaning you've got a loss of traction, it, you're giving it throttle, but that wheel is spinning it's going to break that individual tire. Now we'll do this all the time, but it increases the sensitivity when you're in X mode because it knows that you're trying to do something off-road. And so you need that grip. You want that static grip, not that tire spinning. And so by locking a tire that's spinning, it allows you to increase the amount of torque that you are sending to the wheel. So you send more torque to the wheel now that has traction because one's locked up, it's still getting torque, uh, but you can increase the amount of torque it gets by locking it up. So now you're sending more torque to the wheel that actually does have traction, and that allows you to accelerate over that obstacle or whatever it may be. And finally, it offers you hill descent control. So as you can see here, going down this fairly steep hill, um, and I'm not touching the brake or the throttle pedal, and it's doing all of that for me. So it adjusts the throttle as necessary, it adjusts the brakes as necessary, and as you can see, it just gives me a nice controlled descent, actually pretty decent, uh, 
approach angle there didn't rub the front and you can hear those brakes going a little bit just making sure that it stays at that controlled speed so that allows you in scenarios like that you can just focus on steering where do you need to place the car rather than you know how much uh, throttle do I need how much braking obviously braking is what you're going to be going for in that descent scenario so how much braking do you need instead you just think okay I'm just going to steer it uh, here's the line I want to take and you do it and the car controls the braking and the acceleration as needed okay so now we know those five key areas where X mode is trying to you know improve the way that you can handle any off-road scenario but what is new for 2019 so new for 2019 they have this new dial here and it allows you to choose between two different modes you have the snow and dirt mode and then you have the deep snow and deep mud mode and so the difference between these two in snow and in dirt you don't want your tires to be spinning you want them to be to maintain control and just gradually move you through it if you start slipping then the car starts to slide in in the snow in mud however Subaru recognizes that there are certain scenarios in which you want more uh, wheel slip you want to allow the car to continue momentum to maintain its momentum and so you do that by allowing for wheel slip so traditionally with the previous generation of the X mode let's say you're coming through you know some deep mud and it starts to see that wheel slip occur well it's going to try and break that wheel so that you can get more torque down but what it doesn't realize is that in that scenario it's slowing the car down it's killing your momentum by not allowing that wheel to slip so with this new deep snow and deep mud mode what it allows for you to do is just allow all of those wheels to slip if they start spinning don't worry about intervening with the traction control system and the brakes you know try to deliver torque to the wheel that needs it and instead just allow for those wheels to spin up so that you can maintain momentum whether it's deep snow or deep mud or whatever it may be so different mode and it's cool that they've added that to allow for some additional functionality uh, depending on the scenario that you may be driving in so again it's just kind of going for that you know it's an adventure vehicle where you can get to the places you need to be going to do you know whether that's kayaking or camping or hiking or whatever it may be uh, not about rock crawling you know but it does give you the things like 8.7 inches of ground clearance which is nice it's the best for the segment uh, for being all-wheel drive it gets 33 miles per gallon on the highway which is the best in the segment when you put these uh, two rear seats down it has the best cargo capacity for the segment so a lot of practical things uh, that I think if you enjoy you know going camping or hiking you need all that space you want good fuel economy because you're traveling a bunch uh, you want the all-wheel drive system you want the ground clearance uh, that enables you to have so it's a it's a cool overall package um, and I've enjoyed driving and I hope you all have enjoyed watching this video if you have any questions or comments of course feel free to leave those below thanks for watching and one last hill descent so you can see it shows the angle there it's saying 18 degrees there's 20 degrees so a negative 20 degree slope